The Open Window, Part One. A nervous man. Frampton Nuttall was very tired and nervous. The doctors told him he needed a rest and said he should go somewhere peaceful. So he decided to spend some time in the country. I know what you're like, Frampton. His sister said, "When you go to the country, you will stay all alone. That's not good for you." You should not stay all alone. You should meet some nice people. I was in that part of the country four years ago. I met some nice people. I will write you some letters of introduction, and you can meet them. I am not sure that is a good idea," objected Frampton. "Maybe I shouldn't. After all, I don't know any of those people." "Take my advice," replied Frampton's sister. "It will be good for you." So Frampton went to the country with his sister's letters of introduction. The first person he visited was Mrs. Sappleton. He knocked at the door of Mrs. Sappleton's house, and a young girl about fifteen years old opened the door. It was Mrs. Sappleton's niece. Her name was Vera. My aunt will be down in a moment, Mr. Nuttall. Said the girl, who looked very mature and intelligent. While you are waiting, I will try to entertain you. I hope you don't mind. Oh, I will be happy to talk with you," replied Frampton. He did not want to offend the girl, but he wondered if going to meet new people was really good for his health. In fact, he felt quite nervous, and he hoped that Mrs. Sappleton was nice. Do you know many of the people round here? Asked Mrs. Sappleton's niece after a few minutes of silence. No, replied Frampton. I don't know anybody around here. My sister stayed here four years ago, and she gave me some letters of introduction to some of the people here. Frampton felt more and more nervous, and he was more and more convinced that it was a bad idea. He needed rest. Not new friends. Then you know practically nothing about my aunt," continued the confident young lady. "I know only her name and address," admitted Frampton. He was wondering whether Mrs. Sappleton's husband was alive or dead. Looking at the room, he thought that a man must live there. My aunt's great tragedy happened exactly three years ago," said the girl. That was after your sister was here. Your aunt's tragedy? Asked Frampton. He thought the country was very peaceful. He could not imagine a tragedy there. You probably wonder why we keep that window open on a cool October evening," said Vera. In fact, behind Frampton's chair there was a large French window that opened onto a lawn. It is very warm for this time of the year," said Frampton. "But is that window connected with the tragedy? Exactly three years ago, my aunt's husband and her two younger brothers went out through that window. They were going hunting. They never came back. While they were going to their favorite hunting spot, they fell into a bog. That particular summer, it rained a lot. The bog was normally safe, but after the rain, it became very dangerous. Their bodies were never found. That is the most horrible part of the story. Until this moment, the young girl had seemed very calm. Now she seemed a little frightened, and her voice trembled as she continued the story. My poor aunt thinks that her dead husband and brothers will return some day, together with the dog that went with them. She thinks that they will walk into the house through that French window, as they always did before they died. That is why that window behind you is kept open until dark. My poor aunt. She has often told me every detail of that terrible day. Her husband carried a white raincoat over his arm. 
Her youngest brother was singing the song, Bertie, Why Do You Bound? He sang this song to make fun of her. Sometimes, Mr. Nuttall, I, I have the strange feeling that they will return, that they will walk in through that window. It's horrible, really horrible. She stopped telling him her sad story. Frampton was happy when the aunt came back into the room. I hope my niece is entertaining you, Mr. Nuttall, Mrs. Sappleton said. She is uh, very interesting, said Frampton nervously. Part 2. Mental Excitement I hope you don't mind the open window, said Mrs. Sappleton quickly. My husband and my brothers will be back from hunting soon. They always come into the house through that window. Today they went to the bogs to hunt for snipe. When they come home, I am sure they will make a mess of everything. You know what men are like. Mrs. Sappleton continued to talk about hunting. She told Frampton that there were not many snipes that year. She said that she hoped there would be a lot of ducks in November. To Frampton it was all completely horrible. While he tried desperately to change the topic of conversation, he was conscious that Mrs. Sappleton only gave him part of her attention. She continued to look past him, out the window. Obviously, she's looking for her dead husband and brothers, Frampton thought. What a terrible time to visit her. Today, the anniversary of their death. To change the topic of conversation, he started talking about his bad health. The doctors, he said, told me to rest. I should avoid mental excitement, and I should avoid all physical activity. They did not, however, tell me what I should eat. Oh, that is very interesting, said Mrs. Sappleton, who was obviously not really interested at all. In fact, she almost yawned. Then she became very interested, but not in what Frampton was saying. Here they are, she cried. They're just in time for tea. Look, they're covered with mud up to their eyes. Frampton shivered and looked at Vera. His look seemed to say, Oh, I'm really sorry for your poor aunt. But the girl was looking out the window, and she looked horrified. Frampton became terrified. He turned around and looked out the window too. It was almost dark, but Frampton could see three men walking across the lawn towards the window. They all carried guns. One of the three men had a white raincoat over his arm. There was also a small dog. They did not say a word. When they were near the window, one of them began to sing... Bertie, why do you bound? Frampton jumped up from his chair. He picked up his coat and ran out of the house to the road and was never seen again. Here we are, my dear, said the man who was carrying the white raincoat over his arm. I'm sorry we are a little muddy. Who was that man who ran away? A very strange man. His name is Frampton Nuttall, said Mrs. Sappleton. He only wanted to talk about his bad health. And then he ran away without saying goodbye and without apologising, as if he had seen a ghost. I think he ran away because he saw the dog, said Mrs. Sappleton's niece calmly. He told me that he was very afraid of dogs. When he was in India many years ago, he was attacked by a pack of wild dogs. He ran into a cemetery and had to spend the night in a newly dug grave. The dogs growled and snarled above him for the entire night. So you can understand why he is so afraid of dogs. Inventing fantastic stories was Vera's speciality.